Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Juan Solo here with A-Squad Gaming. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys, for some more Ghost Recon Wildlands. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over all of the assault rifles that were in the open beta. And basically, this list should be identical to the full game. It might have an extra weapon. It might take one away. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be a full list of what we're going to have at the game's launch on March 7th. So the first assault rifle, this is the assault rifle basically that you start the game with, which is the P416 assault rifle. It's a modular weapon. It has very low damage. It's decent accuracy, rate of fire. Basically, I would say this, call this like the generic assault rifle. You know, it's not a bad assault rifle. It's a great assault rifle to start with. Um... And overall, with the attachments that you can get in the, the um, Itaqua region, it's a very, very good weapon. So, overall, good assault rifle. It's not bad. There's definitely better ones out there. So, next, we're going to be talking about the TAR-21. This was the other assault rifle that you could actually unlock with a weapon crate and be able to take it into the gunsmith in the open beta. So, this weapon is... it has a little bit more recoil than the P416, but overall, it does have more damage. So it's it's kind of a trade-off, especially if you put a vertical foregrip on it like I have here. Um, it's a pretty good weapon, especially if you tap it, if you don't just lay into the trigger. Because if you just lay into the trigger, it does kind of shoot upwards. Um, it has really good range. It's a very good modular weapon. It just has a little bit more damage and also a little bit more recoil than the P416. Next up, we're going to be talking about the SR3M. So this... I. Personally, it doesn't look like an assault rifle to me. It looks more like an AK-74U submachine gun, but it is actually in the assault rifle class in this game. It does have a higher damage than the other two assault rifles that we've checked out so far. Um, really good handling. That's why I almost would presume this being a submachine gun instead of an assault rifle. But uh, very high rate of fire, very low range, good handling and everything like that. But it's an assault rifle. So I think this is going to be something that I might even rock occasionally as a secondary, or not a secondary, but like my second primary. Um, if I'm not going to use a sniper, if I'm the guy, you know, doing the dirty work on the ground, I might run like a, an ACR and then have this as my backup, just because it's basically a modular assault rifle that feels like a submachine gun. But overall, it should be a really good gun. Next up, we're going to be talking about the 556XI, which is what would Roman numeral 11. But uh, this weapon has a very, very good damage. This is probably one of the highest assault rifle um, damages in the entire game. And if you go down through all the stats there, it's pretty it's pretty um, average all the way across the board. Accuracy is not as high as some other assault rifles, but overall the damage is really, really good. It kind of reminds me somewhat of like an M4 carbine or even an ACR, but it doesn't have um, the straight magazine. It has the curved magazine. It kind of looks like the AK. But uh, I can see this weapon being a weapon that I use it quite a bit because it does pack a punch. And then if it actually has the ability to take it over to a single shot um, away from the full auto and then you can switch it over to a single shot, this weapon is going to be a very, very good weapon at long range engagements. So next we're going to be talking about the AK-12. And this actually right here, just visually, you can tell it has a very short magazine, which I'm kind of curious about. Once we get to the full game and I'm actually able to find this weapon and use it, um, I know it was in the open beta and the closed beta, but I never did actually pick it up and use it. But uh, it's a very, it's a very good um, weapon. It doesn't have as much of a punch as the 5.56, but it does have a very, very high rate of fire, decent amount of handling. So this is going to be a weapon that's going to be a little bit more of a close quarters weapon, um, not so much at a very extreme long range like some of the other assault rifles are going to be. But overall, it's going to be a very good assault rifle. Um, next, we're going to be talking about the AUG. So. It kind of depends on what game you play. This is either an assault rifle or even some other games. It's actually considered a light machine gun. But uh, you cannot misjudge how this thing looks. You can pick this gun out of a crowd just because it looks a lot different than most assault rifles. And it also has the rear magazine um, where the magazine is actually right back by the buttstock, which is kind of unique for assault rifles. So handling, one of the best handling assault rifles in the game based off of the stats. Rate of fire pretty decent range is pretty decent damage isn't bad it's not as high as the 556 but it is higher than some of the other assault rifles like the p416 and also the tar 21 so overall pretty good assault rifle i'm really looking forward to trying this one out just because the way it looks i've always been a fan of the aug and all the different games that i've played ghost recon call of duty it's always been one of my favorite guns Next, we're going to be talking about the 805 Bren A2. So this is the 805 Bren, the SA805. It's actually, this weapon was in Battlefield 4. Um, I used it a lot in Battlefield 4. It's a pretty good modular weapon. Um, it doesn't have as high a damage as I thought it would, 
but uh, pretty decent accuracy, handling's good, rate of fire is pretty average, um, noise reduction and penetration is kind of low, um, which kind of surprised me a little bit because this is sort of kind of like a scar, but uh, overall, pretty good weapon. Um, it definitely might not be one of the weapons that I primarily use, just because it's, you know, it's there's definitely other assault rifles that are going to be better than this weapon, but I'm going to go through and probably check them all out and give you guys some in-depth on all these weapons, so stay tuned for that. Next up, we have the G2. Um, depending on what game you play, it's, this weapon can be called a number of different things. Um, I know in uh, Modern Warfare 2, this was like the FAMAS. Also, and there was a couple other games that this, uh, I believe this was also in um, Rainbow Six Siege, some of the other Rainbow Six games from back in the day. But uh, it's it's a pretty it's if it's if it stands up to the other games it's going to be a decent weapon. The only thing that kind of jumps out at me is the damage. It's a pretty low damage, but I'm I'm going to basically say that the rate of fire being as high as it is is definitely going to make up for that damage. Being able to put a lot of shots down range very very quickly, it has very very good range, very good handling. So this is going to be more of a long range weapon, especially with the full length rail system on top. Being able to probably put some really long um you know ACOGs and some other sights on it and stuff like that that's really going to help you at those long ranges. So next we're going to be talking about the L85A2 and personally this is a light machine gun in my opinion but you know it's classified as an assault rifle in this game so you know it is what it is but basically every other game that I have ever played this has been classified as a light machine gun but it is what it is. Very good damage for an assault rifle, accuracy is pretty decent not so much in the handling department because it is so big and bulky like i said it's more like a light machine gun range is very very good though which this is actually going to be a weapon that's going to be very good at long range because it has really decent accuracy and very high range rate of fire not so much but if you're going to be using this thing at long range you're not really going to need it to be um, a high rate of fire um, and it's going to be an overall pretty good weapon at, at medium to long range engagements so next we have the r5 rgp this weapon you can actually obtain very easily in the closed and the open beta. Basically, um, pretty much any Unidad soldier is carrying this weapon. Um, it's a pretty good weapon. Overall, it does have more recoil than the P416, but you know it does pack a little bit more of a punch. Handling's a little bit higher. Range is not quite what I thought it would be, being the long barrel that's in this thing. But uh, overall, it's a pretty modular weapon. I would compare this, you know, very similar to the M4 carbine that we're going to see here in a sec. Um, Low rate of fire, this thing does not shoot very quickly, and it actually does have a decent amount of recoil for being a, such a slow shooting gun. So this probably isn't one of the weapons that I'm going to be primarily using in the full game, just because it has a little bit of, a little bit of quirkiness, I guess you could say, with a, a low rate of fire and then also a high um, recoil pattern. So next we're going to be talking about the ACR, and this is the one I'm probably looking forward to the most, because I've pretty much been a fan of the ACR forever no matter what game it's in whether it be the ghost recon future soldier you know call of duty 4 or not call of duty 4 um modern warfare 2 modern warfare 3 um big fans of the acr it's kind of been my go-to gun and this is probably going to be the weapon that's primarily going to be on my back throughout the entire game let's refresh the paint there real quick uh damage is decent for an assault rifle accuracy is pretty good handling very good range decent you know especially if you put a long barrel on it it's actually going to increase the range a little bit Pretty decent rate of fire, noise reduction is not bad, and penetration, it's its average for an assault rifle, but just this has always been my go-to gun um, for a long, long time. Pretty much ever since I started using it in Modern Warfare 2, it's been my go-to gun. So this gun, it's its pretty modular, it's a very good assault rifle, it's probably one of the better assault rifles in the game, um, with damage and all that stuff being you know, average or above average across the board, so look for this weapon to be on my back at all times in Ghost Recon Wildlands. So next, the AK-47. You can't go wrong with the AK-47, but I'm kind of surprised at some of the some of the attributes down there. Um, damage is pretty good. It's above average for an assault rifle in this game. Um, accuracy, I'm not surprised that it's down. It's the AK. This gun's going to have a lot of recoil. Handling's not exactly as much as I probably thought it would be, uh, but it is a pretty heavy, bulky assault rifle. Range, I thought the range would be higher, but just make sure to throw a long barrel on that, and you guys will be able to poke out uh, enemies at a little bit further distance. Rate of fire... It's pretty average for an AK. Noise reduction, I'm not surprised that that's down because it is a very, very loud weapon. And penetration, I thought it would be a little bit higher being, um, you know, that it's an AK-47. It does pack a punch. But uh, overall, this is going to be a weapon that I probably don't use that often just because I'm being actually, a, it's, you're, you're playing as a ghost, which is kind of like a U.S. military character. And I just don't see usually using these kind of weapons very often. And we got somebody trying to join my squad. M4A1, up next, pretty much your standard military um, carbine weapon for the United States military for a long, long time. Not surprised, low damage, 
decent accuracy. I honestly thought the accuracy would be a little bit higher. Decent handling. Rate of fire is quite high for an assault rifle. Range, not too bad. It's it's more of a medium range to close range weapon. So uh, I wouldn't be using this weapon to be doing long distance shooting um, unless you really tap that trigger. Um, but overall, average, average assault rifle. Better than some, worse than some. But overall, pretty average assault rifle. Also, probably not one that I'm actually going to be using very often. But uh, next, we're going to be talking about the MK-17, the Mark 17. Now, this one, along with the ACR, are going to be my two go-to weapons. So, the damage on this is actually the highest damage in the assault rifle class. Very, very good accuracy. The handling is not as high because this is going to be your extreme long-range weapon, along with, like, your MK-14. Um... Very good accuracy, bad handling, extremely good range for an assault rifle. If you tie that in with like an ACOG, an ACOG scope and a long barrel with even maybe a muzzle break or something like that, this gun is going to be able to shoot really, really far, very accurately. Low rate of fire because I think I'm honestly believing that this weapon is going to be a single shot weapon for the most part is what I'm going to run it as. So being the fact that it's got a low rate of fire, I'm totally fine with that. Noise reduction, I'm not surprised that it's down. It's going to be a very loud weapon. Penetration, one of the highest penetrations in all the assault rifles. So overall, this weapon is going to be is going to be one of the go-to weapons for long-range engagements, just because it's really going to pack a punch. So next, the AK-12 GR Network. So this is kind of like the custom AK-12 with the Ghost Recon Network on it. So this basically it attributes identical to the AK-12, except it comes with a sight already on it, and then it has the really cool Ghost Recon Network. I'm pretty sure you're going to have to get this out of the Ubisoft Club with Ubisoft Points, um, or you're just going to basically have to set up a task force or something on Ghost Recon Network, which I already have. I've already created a Ghost Profile, so if you guys want to do that, go check that out. But uh, overall, it's a pretty cool skin on the weapon. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Next, we have the Her AK-47. Um, this was actually available in the open beta and the closed beta if you basically beat the first um, boss at the end of um, the first region. Uh, it has a round drum magazine on it. I'm not too keen on the fact that it's pink, but this was a female's weapon, so it is what it is. It kind of goes with the theme. Pretty average stats across the board. The way it looks with just like the, the wooden front stock there and everything on it looks pretty cool. I just, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the pink, but overall, decent weapon. The His AK-47, now I could dig this one with the basically almost like the sniper scope on top. This is a very long range weapon. You know, the custom butt stock that's on it and stuff like that with like the old style look of the banana clip. Sort of like a banana clip. I guess you couldn't call it a banana clip. But overall, if I had to choose between the His or the Her AK, I would be choosing this one just because this is a lot more of a long range weapon. And that's kind of what I like to do in Ghost Recon. So then next we have the M4 one, or M4A1 Tactical. Pretty much the same thing as the M4, um, but this is the one that you get for killing one of the other bosses in the region. Just has a few little things already attached to it. And like I said, I don't know if you guys watched one of my other videos. If you get one of these weapons that you kill a boss and unlock these unique epic weapons or um, I don't know, exotic weapons, I guess you could say, you cannot take them into the gunsmith and mod them. So basically, this is what you get. The sight that's on it, the silencer, the foregrip, everything that's on this, you cannot change. This is the way the weapon is. You cannot mod it at all, so you're stuck with it this way. So make sure you guys remember that. Next, we have the Ritmo. It's basically another AK-12. I kind of like the fact that they almost put like a modern warfare like scribble down the side with the way that like the green line is. So I don't know if that was kind of a poke at Call of Duty or not. But uh, overall, it's got a grenade launcher, a decent sight on it, long barrel attachment and stuff like that. So this is going to be a pretty decent weapon if you guys want to use a very, very, very high accuracy and a very high rate of fire. So overall, a pretty good weapon. Next, last but not least, we have the SIG 556. And the only way you're going to get this weapon is you actually have to unlock this through the Ubisoft Club um, with Ubisoft points or the UB points and or excuse me the U play points and this thing looks ridiculous it's got like a little bit of gold etching in it and uh, this actually has the highest accuracy in the assault rifle class as you guys can see here it doesn't have a foregrip on it and it, I don't believe it even has a long barrel on it and the accuracy is peaked very good range very good accuracy high damage very high penetration low rate of fire this is also a weapon that I'm once I unlock it through the Uplay account is going to be in my bag 
at all times. So that's pretty much all, guys. Those are all the assault rifles. Make sure to stay tuned. I am going to be covering all the other weapons in the game. Make sure to stay tuned for that. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys are psyched for Ghost Recon Wildlands, make sure to drop a like on the video, guys. It really helps me out, and it only takes a second. Also, if you guys are new around here, make sure to subscribe for more Ghost Recon Wildlands content. I am going to be uploading one video every day leading all the way up to the launch and post-launch of Ghost Recon Wildlands. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you guys later. Peace out.